How you doing? Uh, Niall Stutter my name. I'm a uh, suckler and sheep farmer in Potomac on the Galway. Also do a bit of contracting and I weigh for ICBF as well. I'm running 33 suckler cows, 22 purebred partenay and 12 commercials. I run a flock of blue texel sheep as well, 25 blue texel purebreds and a mixture of commercials then up to about 100 sheep altogether. I'm lambing the purebreds in 1st of March on and I'm lambing the commercials from the middle of March on and the uh, calving of the cows started on the middle of February and I now have 27 cows calved, uh, leaving seven, 7 left. Ground temperature was very good this year. Uh, the 1st of March ground temperature was three times as high as it was last year. But I got out with, with urea on the 6th of April this year, which is a big bonus. It just hasn't happened too often. And I put out two quarters of bags to the acre over all the grazing ground, which is giving me a big bonus of grass now. And then I got out yesterday with um, some grass on the side of the ground, some of the side of the ground and some of the, the grazing ground as well. Um, I have a I use a quad and, and sp spreader for the putting out the, the fertilizer. It's a lot easier on the ground and it lets me go earlier with the fertilizer as well than the, the tractor. I putting out sorry from there today is putting out 2,000 gallons per acre on heavy grass covers with the trail and shoe. The trail and shoe is able to get the sorry under the leaf of the grass onto the ground, and that means I can graze the grass an awful lot quicker than if it was spread with a splash plate uh, on top of the grass where it have to be washed in and possibly take nearly a month before the taste and spoilage will go off the grass. This way, the, the slurry is going straight to the ground, and there is no ammonia is smell going up in the air and doing the job for the environment. I'm breeding Partenay here uh, since zero, zero 06. I was working on the farm up in Kilbegan and I spotted uh, Partenay bulls in the shed. I'd never seen them before <coughs> and uh, caught me fancy. And I bought a bull off that man, off Anthony, and then there was a, I spotted on the journal a trip going to France and I went to France with a group of I think there was 14 of us went to France and we bought there was a lorry load of cattle between everybody was bought that time. And I bought my first cow and calf and she was in calf again. So I started from there. The next year I couldn't go to France. Another guy went to France, Larry Harney went to France at that time and he bought a cow and calf yeah, cow and calf for me. 
and I, she came home and she was in calf again. And so I started basically from two two cows <clears throat> and I got another bought another one then in zero nine. All the cows, part of the cows I have here on the farm are traced back to three to my three basic or three base cows that I bought them back them years. But everything I have here has parts in their blood in it. Um, I find the docility of them is great and they're easy calving um, and they are good and they're good hardy calves and they're, and they're doing get a nice price in the market and the purebred ones then that are fit for breeding I mainly keep the heifers myself I have some heifers, I have cows and calves gone to England but I mainly keep the, the heifers for myself here and continue breeding on the lines that I have every year I have I've got four purebred heifers now and one commercial going to the bull this year. Um, I just find them very hard, very easy to handle. They're a, a one-man stock. There's, you know, they're very easy to drive, they follow you very handy and they're, not, they're docile, so they're, they're grand. And I got into the sheep then, the blue texels, by sort of accident. I was looking on done deal one, one day for um, Millennium Blue Ram. The next thing I came across an ad for Blue Texas and I said, God, they, they're different. And I said, I try one of them. So I got a ram. I'm not sure as soon as I seen the ram and the docility of them, I said I had to get two, a couple of, of yours to go with them. So there was a bit of scouting going for the yours. The man I bought the sheep off in Wexford said, You won't get a flipping yours down south or down south, you'll have to go to the north. So had to go do a bit of looking then to get sheep up in the north, but I got, I got a guy, farmer that was very obliging and he sold me three sheep and he actually, we had mutual friends when we got talking, <laughs> he asked me, asked me where I came from, a seven year band law, I said, oh do you know Liam McGuire down there? I said, I do, he said, a good friend, he said, oh Liam and me are good friends, he said, so myself and Gordon up in the north became friendly and if I want blue Texas now I'll give him a shout and he'll know where to get them up in the north. But I find them, they're doing me a favour now, the, the, the Blue Texels means that I qualify for the Qualitex group in that league. That's a producer group that we get a bonus of 30 cent a kilo for our U grades and 35 for the E's. So I'm getting a good decent, most my, say about 60% of my stock would be U's and maybe 10 would be E's. So I'm getting a good bonus for having good great stock and they're not that hard done so I'm sticking with the, the blues and they're easy, they're, they don't roam, they're, they're quite cheap around the place too, it takes very little to keep them in a field and, and that and they're, they're getting people's attention now as well, they're, they're darker in colour and their people are, are not noticing but they're getting more popular as well. As the cows are calving this year with the weather being so good I've been able to let them out in grass after two or three days inside just to get bonding with, with the cow and calf. 20, 20 cows out now with their calves and they're doing well out in the grass. The uh, farm is based of eight fields. I started eight, starting farming eight fields book back in 09 and then I started paddocking them. I was having the fields and then I was having the halves again so I've gone from eight, eight fields now to 35 different paddocks which makes an awful difference in grass growth which means that I can flip and graze one little bit of the field and flip and go on then to the next bit and there's always, always three quarters of the field growing with grass where there's only really eating a small bit of it and can, that means you can be more control of your grass but it also means I have, can have an overproduction of grass at times too but lucky enough I was in doing contract baling back until 06 and I kept the machinery since so when a uh, paddock goes too strong I'm able to put go out there and cut it and bale it and wrap it myself so I had to do th things when I need it. Um, this means that I've, I've a surplus of bales nearly every year, which is no harm. I use these for, for feeding the, the, the lambs in the field. They're, they're a control feeder, I can control the amount of meal that the, that the lambs eat. It's not how I'd live because the lamb has the sheep have to eat into a slot here and lick it, lick it out. It would be better if I had lambs out the field, you can see it. But you can, the lambs lick with their tongue. Out of it instead of eating with their mouth. So after a minute or two, 
the lamb's mouth will get dry and he has to go get a drink of water and he has to go back and forth if he wants more meal than or not. It's a good way of keeping a lamb without getting sick from meal and control the, 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 the amount of meal you use. Like I, that can control, you can bring it down to about two pound a meal a day. You can, you know exactly what to do like. Do like. And um, I'm mixing up my own ration here and it works okay because it's a dry ration, but if you're using molasses in it, it mightn't work as well. But it's a deal for pellets and all that sort of stuff. But it works grand. I've, I'm using that now for the last four or five years and I'm very, very happy with them. So it's, 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 it's a good, good solid machine. I'm able to, to, to pull it round behind the quad then going from paddock to paddock. You don't have to use any. Or I can lift it with the tractor and loader if I want then, but it's mainly with the, the quad and the, a rope behind the quad and pulls it around from paddock to paddock. It's handy. It's on skids. I also do weighing for ICBF in Cork. I'm a qualified weighing technician for them. And I'm travelling the west of Ireland. I cover Galway, Offaly, Tipperary, a bit of Roscommon as well. Um, I'm logged into the computer in Cork and I can have all, I get the farmer's hair number and I have all these details, these cattle numbers there on the, on the handhelds and they go into the handhelds, they go into, the, into the, I log them into Cork and I finish the weights and it comes back along with the weight being printed out, I, I have the daily live weight gain of the animal from birth, what they have done and if you want then I can give a forecast if you want two or three months down the line which will give a rough idea of what, what, if the animal stays going the way it is, what it's going to be in a couple of months' time, which makes it very handy. But I find that's one of the most important things in my farm for animals because I know now how the cattle, how the cows and the calves are performing, with, with, say with the beep. But I know that if I weigh my, I'd always weigh the calves in the end of June just to see how the cow has done producing milk for the calf to say has the calf throve enough from other years or has the cow dropped back in the milk consumption or production from the year before because if you drop away just at grass off after peak grass the cow will be able to peak milk production and I'll know then whether he's reached 1.3 or maybe back down to 1.1 which 0.2 a kilo a day over the, over the lifetime of the calf to here to weaning is a big amount and 250 a kilo Plus, it runs into money as well. You want to know which way, which cows are producing the better calves and which ain't. But um, it is, to me, the, the, the way in the cattle, it is, um, some people call it a job, but I find that it's a livestock management. Because I know exactly which way the, the cows are going and the calves in, which way they're, are they, like your, your best cow is not going to produce your best calf. So when you see down in paper the percentage weight of the calf to the cow is what it's all about. There's no point in having a cow 850 kilos and she's only weaning 310 every year. Mike is just not covering the bills anymore. It's hard enough to get them to cover the bills when they're throwing the, the 400 kilo ones, but it is, um, to me it's important to know the, the weight of the calf mid season compared to the, the end because you can if it's you get him early enough in the time you, you might be able to solve the problem why he's not putting the weight on you can give him a bit of extra meal or segregate them put the heavy ones from the light ones and give the lighter ones a bit more meal and that sort of stuff. This is the slip I give out when I'm finished uh, weighing the cattle. I course the course the cork and comes back. Uh, here we have the, the tag numbers of cattle and that's the breed of them there, they're all females, the age of them and the weight they are today. That's the daily life weight gain the do since birth. And these are heifers I'm hoping to or hope to go to the bull. And that's the way it's to be on the 31st of May, the date I put in that they'll be going to the bull. So hopefully there'll be some of them there above this target or at the target that they can go to the bull. Other than that, they've all been weighed. There's a number of times been weighed. they've been weighed five times. And they'll be weighed another time before they go to the bull anyway, they'll weigh that day as again. So it's very hard to, to, to have the, that information. Um, there's 11 months old at the average in 329 kilos, but the disappointing part is they only put on 0.8 of a kilo a day since birth. They should be putting on 0 0.1, what they normally do, but the silage is drier this year, they weren't that fond of it, and that's the way to 379 is what they'll average today on the 31st of May this year. So that's the, the thing there, and there's 11 out of 11 animals using the group average.
the other job I do, I do a bit of contracting, I do grass care for people, I sort of spray for, for hire and I reseed as well. I have a butler overseeder with the, on the front and the back of the tractor so I was getting two runs of the machine in one go. Uh, I've been using the gutter since 09 on the back and in 2019 I bought the setup for the front because as it was, I was realising that this ground needs more of a tilt than the one the back was doing on its own so I bought the second system for the front which has made a big advantage. Um, I have to go out now and get the two runs together but it gives, the, the grass then gets a great take and the second one is, there, is given. And uh, it saves the, the problem of plowing and tilling and taking stones and everything like that. You can spray off you spray off today and have grassies in, in 10 days time if you want. But no real loss of the field.